Yes, indeed. Back in the place. It's Labor Day here in the States. And from what you remember, for Labor Day in Jamaica, it was primarily cleanup day, you know? We whitewash the sidewalks and the palm tree roads and the stones and clean up the community. And we made a special effort, a meaningful, committed effort to make sure that the neighborhood in within which you live was presentable. And we tried to maintain that throughout the year. But sometimes, you know, the garbage and stuff would put a little dent in those efforts. Because what, what I remember in the 70s, um, it was a big deal to make Labor Day a very productive day. Here in the States, it's primarily in recognition for the work of labor in building this country. Well, we're not going to go into some of the kind of labors, but unions in the 30s and 20s and 40s created better working conditions for many of the working class and the development of things like better bathroom, for simple things like better bathroom facilities, <clears throat> better working conditions, um, you know, creating pensions and so on for workers and having workers participate a little bit more in the building of the nation, whether it was manufacturing, you know, science and industry. But I'm going to reference a simple understanding of labor and the sweat equity. So a friend of mine, Grace Morris Thompson, posted an anniversary celebration for the George Cohen Basic School there in Port Antonio. Now Grace and I grew up together. There was Grace Morris, as I knew her then, and Claudia Roper. We were two American friends as youths growing up from infant school to primary school to high school. And then life divergent path took us in different directions. But people like Grace remained in Port Antonio, you know, got their educational training, went back to Port Antonio, and still there. And remember now that back in the day, like when George Cohen Basic School was built, or established, this is 1971, you know, 50 years ago. Teachers were some of the first entrepreneurs. I remember now in our society, in our culture, entrepreneurship really wasn't say frowned upon, but it wasn't a path that many people took. Because if you were not a civil servant, policeman, teacher, soldier, whatever, you know, you work for a big company, or you work for the banana company, work for the, you know, the copper factory, black factory, that kind of thing. And invariably, you work with an established entity, but, in, but most people would not have gone off on a path of seeking their own growth patterns. So people like the current principal, Mrs. Thompson, not Grace, but another Miss Thompson, went off and created with the help of George Cohen, this basic school. And for that, remember now that the foundation that many of these little basic schools created for many of us. When you look back 50 years ago, 71, you know, I was still a young man. So when I look at the pictures and see the smile with the youth, they wear them tie down to their knee and them hand, you know, just that's a bright smile. You kind of just look at yourself in the mirror, a younger self and realize that the foundation that was built for us on the backs, the sweat, blood, sweat, and tears of many are young entrepreneurs. And there are a number of them in Port Antonio who were not only teachers, but they would be cookies and bring to school, bake all kind of candies and bring to school to not just supplement their income, <clears throat> but to provide a service to the youths who went to the school there. You know, there was Miss Henry, there was Miss Ashmead, there was so many of them. You know, Miss Townsend. And, and the list goes on and on and on. Who had these little entrepreneurial outlets that created the kind of connection with their students. 
so that they understood that they just not, weren't meant to be just teachers, but they were there to care for them and care about them. So Grace, a lot of love and commitment in what you do and keep on doing it. Because remember now, in the small town that we're from, we grew up seeing civil servants like policemen and teachers as part and parcel of the fabric of our community. I remember I'll come on name is a read, he was a blue scene inspector. And he would walk the streets. He had a little um Austin Cambridge and he would live, he lived right out at East Palm Avenue on the other side of Mr. Thomas, who was also another policeman. And then there was this man who would always fear him. The first bike man me no important to a bike policeman, we used to call him Sabo. And he used to have a stylish ride and he'd ride up and down and just make his presence felt. And there was this big respect, the same kind of respect you would get for a teacher and the numerous teachers in our community. So the labor we know, but we say labor day. And we're not putting any rank and file on the kind of labor. Whether you dig a ditch or you sit in a boardroom. We're just talking about people who are the backbone of our society, who help build and create. People who see their commitment to community as the cornerstone, as the foundation on which many lives have been built. So when you look at little towns like Port Antonio, everyone in America, because they reflect small town Jamaica in many, many, many ways. Because many of us left and went on to create different avenues for our lives. But our hearts were still in the small town called Port Antonio. So while my journey took me into Kingston, to get tertiary education. There were many things about my small town experience which remained in, our, in, in my heart and the hearts of many a countryman who left countryman and countrywoman who left their little towns in order to, to what they would probably call a path of betterment. Some, in, in, in many cases, it turned out to be, you know, not as fruitful as they would hope, but for many of us, it was the only path that we could have chosen in order to make something else or see something else for our lives. Because many a small town Jamaica were limited in resources, limit, limited in tertiary educational opportunities, limited in business opportunities, and so on and so forth. But coming right back to the foundation, as you see those little youths in the background there who can't be more than six, seven years old. You see yourself in the mirror, you see your younger self. And maybe sometimes we look back and we say, how, if we were to write a letter to our younger selves, what are some of the questions we would ask? You know, because we have to be mindful of the fact that even though we are from a small town, our impact is large, big, universal. Everywhere you go. And I say a small town, Jamaica is like a small town, relatively speaking. Port Antonio is a small town as part of Jamaica, the bigger town. But when you look at the impact worldwide, when you look at the numbers and reflection that we have in the world itself, there is no doubt that foundationally, The George Cohen basic schools of the world, the infant schools out at East Palm Avenue, the Bombo Primary School on a Bombo Road, whether it's Long Bay or Manchinee, whether it's Windsor Forest or Windsor Castle, whether it's Buff Bay or Nata Bay, St. Margaret's Bay, Snow Hill, Norwich, all the small foundational infant and primary schools that formulated our developmental process into who we are today. Some are falling by the wayside because that's life. The numbers are not always going to be 100. But I'm just bringing it back to the notion that when we celebrate a labor day, the labor of love, because remember now, most teachers in most of the societies, their on par wages is relatively speaking, is nowhere close to people who we think contribute less to society. But yet we revere teachers much more than we revere pretty much any other profession in terms of its nobility, in terms of its creating 
human beings that are outside of the reading, the writing, and the arithmetic. The yes, sir, the thank you, the please, the manners, the good language, the verbosity, the writing skills. We must understand again that the foundational process created by teachers like Grace Morris Thompson and many others, because Grace is from my generation and the generation before and the generation after, must always be revered. Once again, friends, family, community. And we speak of this in the highest possible redeeming terms. We must embrace what is good about ourselves as small town country people. Again, walk good. Take it easy. And just remember, as you go through your day, try your best to do no more.